published by Cambridge University Press in 2019, Ben Witherington III presents his Biblical Theology. He shows through this lengthy book that the Bible should be viewed as a unified whole instead of a book where doctrines and topics are broken up into various subjects and portions. My first thought on this book is that it is long. Long in the best of ways and worst of ways. The length of this book provides the reader with tons of moments of abundant wisdom spread throughout the book. His teachings on love and election and insights into the biblical narrative are superb throughout the book. But the length is kind of overwhelming. At a little over 500 pages, that doesn't sound that daunting, but I would love to know the word count of this book because the pages are big. This is a tall book, and on top of that, the, the font is relatively small, making it at times feel like it takes me ages to make it through 10 pages of this book, which then in turn makes progress through this book feel tough, and those wonderful insights at times can feel like they're spread too far apart from each other in the midst of these long pages. I think better formatting of this book could have improved the experience of reading it a lot. And I would make one major change to the format and the way this book is presented. I would present biblical theology more as a reference work than a book to be read from beginning to end as a singular whole. If I read this book one section at a time, for instance, as I was studying Abraham, I would read the section of the book on Abraham. Or if I was doing a dive into the Hebrew word chesed, I would read what Witherington covered on that wonderful Hebrew word. And if I was just reading the stuff on Chesed at one time or Abraham at another time, I think I would have enjoyed this book much more, reading it through in 5 to 25 page chunks as needed. But this book isn't designed as a reference work. It's designed and formatted to be read as a single book. So while it has probably at least 100 great moments in it, biblical theology can be a bear to tackle. And the formatting does the reader no favors. And if you have a few moments, I'll tell you a little bit more about Biblical Theology by Ben Witherington III. Welcome to Rev Reads. If you want to discover more books that will help you to stay grounded in good theology, please subscribe to the channel in order to stay up to date with my latest reviews. Also, please like Share this video with other people. Your share goes a long way in helping other people know about the works of Ben Witherington. And I want to say thank you to the Buy Me A Coffee members. Your support allows me to cover the costs with keeping up with Rev Reads so I can keep putting out these book reviews. And if you have benefited from these reviews, I would love for you to consider supporting the channel as a member at a starting subscription cost of only $3 a month. Using James Mead's definition of biblical theology, in this book, Ben Witherington seeks to identify and understand the Bible's theological message and themes. That is, what the Bible says about God and God's relationship to all creation, especially humankind. So the goal of this book is to help the reader read the Bible with a view toward its theological content and how that theology functions for the people of faith. And he starts the book with some really good thoughts on how to develop a biblical theology, such as allowing the Old Testament to be our foundation, but also as Christians, not losing sight of what will come later in the New Testament. So we need to do the difficult work of first allowing the Old Testament to be the foundation we let the Old Testament speak for itself, but then we also have an eye toward any insight that the New Testament will bring to bear on the passage. And also Witherington's criticisms of standard systematic theological works were also really good at the beginning. Then the book launches us into an understanding or a theology of God based on the Bible as a whole. 
So Ben starts where I would, and that is in the Exodus on God's self-revelation to Moses and the Israelites. And although his view that Jesus is not the angel of the Lord, I did find that to be a little jarring because I, I don't agree with that take at all. Uh, but then his teaching on I am who I am, that was very interesting as he gives all the various options of how one can take that fascinating declaration by God regarding himself. And for me, that kind of encapsulates how much of this book is, and that is there would be something really fascinating in it. There'd be this great insight. I would maybe learn something that I hadn't known for the first time, and then there'd be other spots where I was just scratching my head because Witherington and I were so far off on a take on how to understand a particular passage. And then there were other times as well where, where the book is walking through these passages of the Bible. And you need to understand the goal of biblical theology is to walk us through the entire Bible. And in order to do that in this book, at times, he needs to skip from passage to passage. And the ones he chose just kind of left me baffled in some moments. Like why he picked to cover in detail one particular story and then skipped over an entire book of the Bible. Or why go through so much of Abraham's journey and then only a very, very small portion of Jacob and then skip to Moses. And so you don't mention Isaac or Joseph at all. And then at times he's going through passages so quickly because there's so much to cover that I'm like, you're not even taking time to bring in really good insight because there's just so much to go over. And then in the midst of my frustrations about maybe the passages that are being chosen or some of the sections that were kind of dry and didn't really have a little insight, there are still these moments of brilliance, such as his work on chesed or on his writing on the importance of the covenants, how covenants are used to demonstrate the character of God, as well as his lengthy work on the subject of election. All of that is brilliant. And, and I can't speak too highly of a lot of what you're going to find in this book. But my issue, and maybe this, this was just me, but I have a feeling that it probably won't be the only one, but accessing those insights at times was tough. And it could have been made much easier if this book and what was found in it was just formatted better. And that would have made the entire process of going through this book better. So I would encourage you, if you purchase biblical theology, and there's a lot of good stuff in here that makes it worth your money, I would say to you, read the introduction and the first chapter and then the rest of the book as needed. The scripture index in the back of this book is going to be your best friend for this one. So as you're studying various passages of the Bible, that's when you go to this book. And another thing I wish that was in here, but is not, would be a topical reference at the back of the book. Like I would like to see different biblical topics and subjects that are covered in the Bible and where to reference them in this book. Because for instance, I've mentioned the subject of election already a couple of times in this book. And the reason I do so is because pages 349 to 382, there is an excellent conversation between Ben and Chad Thornhill that should be considered must reading for anyone who is discussing the topic of election and especially election to salvation. What does it mean that Christians are elect? And what they do is discuss how Second Temple Judaism viewed election and how that might have impacted Paul's understanding. And it was great. And there are all these great insights in it, such as how Paul's election language is about markers and identifiers of God's people. In other words, election language is not about how someone enters into the household of faith, whether it's by placing their faith in Jesus Christ or a prior choosing of God and then he gives them faith, but it is about the type of people the elect should be. So the idea of election in the New Testament is... Now that you have believed in Jesus, you are the elect. And this is how the elect should conduct themselves in the world. So election is about a call to live as a member of the household of faith, since that is who you are as someone who believed in Jesus. But when I was reading biblical theology, and I finally came to that portion on election, one of the other frustrating things about the format is that they shrunk down the text even more 
for that conversation and compacted the lines even more, kind of giving me these slight headaches as I was reading because the font was so small. Why well, take a book where the font was already smaller than the norm for books today and, and you have the, these large pages already and then shrink the font even smaller, making it all the more difficult to read? It was great information, but it just was not packaged well. So here's my final thoughts on biblical theology. The book is kind of a mixed bag. It's it's bigger than it appears to be, uh, such as like this book is probably, I would guess it might be longer than say for instance, Adam Harwood's Christian Theology, which is about a thousand pages in length. This is probably similar in length to David Allen's work on the extent of the atonement. It just doesn't look that long. And so it's a big book. So there's a lot of great stuff in there. There's also some stuff in this book that I can't stand, such as Witherington's teaching on how Christians need to add works to grace in order to be secure in Christ. According to this book, no one can snatch you out of the Father's hands, but you can pry yourself out of the Lord's hands and leave the Lord behind you. So I think that people who read biblical theology need to read it with a discerning eye. And if you can do that, there's much to be gained in this book while discounting what you find that doesn't align with Scripture. But for the mature student of God, this is an excellent reference to have on your shelf. This is one that I'm going to be glad to have on my shelf going forward to refer to in future studies.